come vengeance, David. Ah, oh, she's all right. You tell me. You come wrath. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 spoilers that ruin the movie. Because obviously they don't watch enough movies. This is standard horror movie stuff. For this list, we're looking at major spoilers that have the potential to completely ruin a film. These are the types of flicks that are best approached cold. Some spoilers, like the ending of The Sixth Sense, actually reward rewatches and make the movies even better. I see dead people. Movies like that will not be included. Uh, spoilers apply, <laughs> obviously. Did you know about these spoilers beforehand? Did it ruin or enrich the experience? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Esther's Backstory – Orphan Little kids can be creepy. The marketing team knew this and planned accordingly. Moviegoers were expecting a typical story about a disturbed child seriously creeping out her adoptive parents. And for a while, that's what they got. Kate and John Coleman adopt nine-year-old Esther, who immediately makes them uneasy with her behavior and curiously mature knowledge. Can you eat normal? I am eating normal. Yeah, maybe in Transylvania or whatever country you're from. Incidentally, I'm from Russia. Transylvania isn't even a country. It's a part of Romania. In the end, we learn that Esther isn't nine years old, but 33. She suffers from a hormonal disorder called hypopituitarism, and she takes advantage of her stunted growth by posing as a little girl and killing the people who adopt her. And the little girl in the picture is not really a little girl. She's a grown woman. What? It's a very interesting twist, but knowing it completely ruins the movie and immediately answers the questions it raises. Number 19. Mr. Glass's Origin Story – Unbreakable Bruce Willis stars in this subversive superhero origin movie as David Dunn. Dunn has superhuman strength, a fact that he discovers after surviving a catastrophic train derailment. Your train derailed. Some kind of malfunction. They only found two people alive so far. You and this man. He goes under the wing of a comic book expert named Elijah Price, who suffers from brittle bone disease and theorizes that David is on the other end of the physical spectrum. One weak, one strong. However, the mentor turns out to be the villain, as Elijah directly caused the train derailment in an effort to find a superhero. But I found you. So many sacrifices just to find you. It's a devastating twist that nicely subverts the typical mentor-superhero relationship, not to mention the origin story itself. This isn't David's origin story, it's Elijah's. Knowing this beforehand completely ruins the experience. Number 18. The Identity of the Mastermind – Now You See Me In typical heist thrillers, there are two factions. There are the good guy authority figures, and there are the bad guy thieves. Now You See Me plays its own magic trick on the audience and fools them into believing they're watching a typical heist narrative. I want you to follow, because no matter what you think you might know, we will always be one step, three steps, seven steps ahead of you, and just when you think you're catching up, that's when we'll be right behind you. But like all magic tricks, this is just smoke and mirrors. FBI agent Dylan Rhodes actually masterminded the whole scheme and is working with the magician thieves to conduct an act of revenge. And from that moment on, I created a persona. I planned, I worked out every detail, but the one thing that I couldn't imagine happening was you. And like all magic tricks, knowing how it's done completely ruins the illusion. This is purely a film for the uninitiated and the fooled. Number 17. Gabriel, Malignant It's impossible to guess the twist of Malignant. This is the type of horror movie that needs to be watched without knowing anything about the plot, because the twist is just so incredibly outlandish. Madison Lake has visions of people getting killed, and those people end up dead in real life. How bad is it? I've never seen anything quite like it. Maybe from a vehicular accident, but not this. This is something special. The killer is revealed to be a sentient tumor. You see, Madison has a twin brother who is formed out of a tumor. The twin is named Gabriel, and he shares a brain with Madison. Gabriel 
is an extreme version of a teratoma, a tumor consisting of tissues, hair, teeth, muscles, bones, but more specifically in this case, it's a parasitic twin. His face physically appears out of Madison's skull like Voldemort, and he operates her body backwards while her consciousness is in some type of fugue state. If you tell us that you guessed that twist, we will call you a liar. Number 16. Malcolm Rivers – Identity The twist of this movie confounded audiences and critics back in 2003, and it resulted in a divided reception. Some loved it, others hated it. The movie seems to tell two concurrent storylines. One is about an unstable criminal named Malcolm Rivers who is pleading insanity. The other is about ten stranded strangers who begin dying one by one inside a Nevada motel. All right, you want a plan? Everybody want a plan? Here's the plan, okay? No one's gonna move. We're gonna stay here like this in this room until dawn. No one leaves, no one moves. It's eventually revealed that these two seemingly separate stories are actually the same. Malcolm has dissociative identity disorder, and the people in the motel are identities that he has created in his mind. One of the personalities you've met tonight, Edward, committed those murders four years ago. It's an Agatha Christie story with a psychological twist, and this is not something that should be known going in. Number 15. The Truth About Adelaide – Us Jordan Peele is our new master of allegorical horror. Us is about the Tethered, a group of underground clones who literally rise up, kill their surface counterparts, and take over the world. The main Tethered that we follow is Red, who is the clone of Adelaide. There was a girl, and the girl had a shadow. But the ending throws a massive curveball. The real Adelaide was actually abducted as a child and replaced by her tethered counterpart. This tethered was then raised as the real Adelaide while learning how to talk and act like a normal human. The real Adelaide grew underground with the tethered before kickstarting their rebellion. It's our time now. Our time up there. It paints her motivation in an entirely new light and has us questioning the dichotomy between good and evil. Number 14. The Truth About Dad Meeks' Motivation – Frailty Spoilers have the capacity to ruin entire characters. This is a great example. Frailty stars Bill Paxton as Dad Meeks, a seemingly unstable serial killer. He claims that he's been tasked by God to rid the world of demons. You can't just make stuff like that up. We destroy demons. If we were to use your list, we wouldn't be destroying demons, we'd be killing people. And we can never do that. And destroying demons is a good thing. Killing people is bad. He supposedly sees these demons inside the people he kidnaps and kills, but his son just sees a mentally unstable father who, you know, kidnaps and kills people. Audiences are led to side with the son because we know that demons aren't real. But this is a work of fiction, and as it turns out, demons are real and Dad Meeks actually is doing God's work. Jesus Christ, you really do believe all this stuff? I've always believed. Knowing this twist beforehand ruins the supernatural mystery of the movie, not to mention the entire character of Dad Meeks. Number 13. Playing Detective – Shutter Island This is another great example of a spoiler ruining a character. Leonardo DiCaprio plays Teddy Daniels, a U.S. Marshal who investigates Ashcliff Hospital to find a missing patient. So you're my new partner, that's right. Not the best way to meet with my head halfway down the toilet. Doesn't exactly square with Teddy Daniels, the man, the legend, I'll give you that. Of course, the real patient is Teddy himself. He is actually Andrew Latus, an unstable man who killed his wife after what she did to their children. The staff of the hospital allowed Andrew to play detective in a desperate attempt to cure his insanity. Your name is Andrew Ladis. The 67th patient at Ashcliffe is you, Andrew. This spoiler ruins the entire movie. Not only do we know that Teddy isn't a real detective, but the entire mystery of the missing person story is tarnished. Detective fiction works when we don't know the outcome and play along with the protagonist. It's not so fun when we already know the answers. Number 12. The Basement – Parasite 
There is nothing like a good genre switch. Parasite has a great one. It begins as a fun rumination on Korean class discrepancies, with a poor family infiltrating a rich one and acting as their servants. Jessica, but everything changes halfway through upon the discovery of the basement and the hidden Gunsei. Genre switches obviously work best when we don't expect them, as they throw the entire tone and mood of the story into disarray. Knowing about it beforehand brings with it preconceived ideas. We obviously expect it, and we begin to look for clues in scenes that were intentionally designed to mislead viewers. By knowing the spoilers, we are ruining the director's entire intention. Number 11. A Dying Dream – Jacob's Ladder Spoilers have a penchant of ruining the supernatural. Jacob's Ladder follows Jacob Singer, a man who returns from Vietnam suffering from horrible visions. By limiting the point of view to Jacob, viewers are placed in his shoes. We follow the mystery along with Jacob, and the mystery results in many effective scares and memorable sequences. What is with the tentacles and vibrating faces? And what the heck is that hospital? Get me out of here. Where do you want to go? Home. This is your home. You're dead. These are fascinating questions the movie wants us to ask. The ending reveals that Jacob never actually left Vietnam, and that the events in New York are some kind of purgatory experience meant to prepare him for death. Eckhart saw hell, too. You know what he said? He said, the only thing that burns in hell is the part of you that won't let go of your life. Your memories, your attachments, they burn them all away. Knowing this removes the mystery of the story and the visceral punch of Jacob's visions. Number 10. Ransom – Knives Out It goes without saying that whodunits live and die on their mysteries. The entire genre is designed to raise questions and toy with audiences. We play along with the protagonists and try to figure out who actually done it. And that's all part of the genre's fun. I spoke in the car about the hole at the center of this donut. And what you and Harlan did that fateful night seems, at first glance, to fill that hole perfectly. A donut hole in a donut's hole. But we must look a little closer. Knives Out is a modern whodunit in the vein of Agatha Christie. The fun is found in the unraveling mystery and the beautiful subversions of whodunit cliches. By knowing these subversions beforehand, we fail to experience what makes the movie so refreshing. And by knowing the killer, we obviously lose the entire mystery of the whodunit. She didn't say, you did this. She wasn't talking about me, she said, you did this. You did this. Because you made the help call you Hugh. Because you're an asshole. These movies can still be enjoyed on rewatches, but something in our enjoyment is permanently lost when we already know the outcome. Number 9. Snape's True Intentions – The Harry Potter Franchise At this point, there's not a single person on the planet who doesn't know that Snape kills Dumbledore. Severus. Please. How about a cadaver? <laughs> It's perhaps one of the biggest and most famous spoilers since I am your father. Unfortunately, this has somewhat ruined the entire Harry Potter experience. The books were once-in-a-lifetime cultural behemoths, and reading them brought many questions and shocking revelations. Snape's loyalties were questioned and debated for 10 years, and the killing of Dumbledore is one of the most shocking plot developments in recent fictional history. The reveal that Snape was a good guy all along answered long-asked questions and reassured people that their favorite character was, in fact, a hero. Albus Severus Potter. You were named after two headmasters of Hogwarts. One of them was a Slytherin, and he was the bravest man I've ever known. 
by knowing all this beforehand, modern viewers lose out on a key part of the Harry Potter magic. Number 8. Ghostface's Identity – Scream The magic of Scream is in its subversion and acknowledgement of slasher movie tropes. If they'd watch prom night, they'd save time. There's a formula to it. A very simple formula. Everybody's a suspect. There was simply nothing like it back in 1996, and Scream became a cultural phenomenon thanks mainly to the intelligent script from Kevin Williamson. The biggest subversion of them all was the inclusion of two killers. Both Billy and Stu are revealed to be Ghostface, having alternated who dons the costume and does the killing. Surprise, Sydney. This was a substantial and refreshing twist that single-handedly breathed new life into the dying slasher genre. Everyone knows about it now, and the movie's iconic self-aware tone has long been copied. Knowing this spoiler removes much of the movie's invigorating and revolutionary punch. Number 7. The Future Past – Arrival This is an invasion movie with intelligence and heart, not to mention a focus on its human characters rather than its extraterrestrials. Louise Banks is a woman dealing with the grief of losing her 12-year-old daughter. Come back to me. Baby, come back to me. However, we later learn that her daughter hasn't actually been born yet. Interacting with the aliens distorts time and allows humans to see into the future. The memories that Louise has been experiencing of her deceased daughter are actually flash-forwards to a future event. Despite knowing the journey and where it leads, I embrace it, and I welcome every moment of it." Much of this movie's magic is found in its twist, so it's hard to convert those who may think it's just another alien invasion movie. Spoilers not only ruin the surprising nature of the alien's language, but also the entire backstory of Louise's character. Number 6. Jigsaw's Location – Saw this series became famous for its twists, but nothing ever topped the original. Knowing about it completely ruins the magic of the ending. We learn that the Jigsaw Killer likes to watch his victims, and we make the obvious connection to the numerous cameras in the room. But no, those are solely for Zepp. His name is Zepp. He's an orderly in my hospital. Zepp. Jigsaw himself is actually in the room, playing the bloody corpse. Watching him sit up and peel away the makeup while the music crescendos made for one of the finest twist endings of the 2000s. It helped solidify Saw as a modern classic, and provided the twist ending template that the series would largely follow. This is the type of ending that needs to be experienced, not known about. Ah! Ah! Game over. Ah! Number 5. Pretty much everything. Psycho. Unfortunately, Psycho has been permanently tarnished. Humanity will never again experience the shocking invigoration that was watching this movie for the first time in 1960. All of its twists are now universally known. Marion gets killed halfway through the movie, the PI hero Arbogast is disposed of, Norman is the culprit, and he has taken on the identity of his deceased mother. I'm not even gonna swat that fly. I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know and they'll say, why she wouldn't even harm a fly. Not only that, but the movie undergoes a major genre shift, switching from a getaway heist thriller to a primitive slasher. The movie can still be enjoyed as a cinematic work of art, obviously, but as an unpredictable movie-going experience meant to shock unaware audiences, it has been ruined. She just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? Experiencing this movie in 1960 must have been unbelievable. Number 4. They'll Never Be the Same – Old Boy The twist of Old Boy is… well, it's something else. Left unknown, it may prove to be the most shocking movie twist of all time. At least in terms of pure visceral reaction. 
It's a twist that needs to be experienced and digested, and knowing about it greatly tarnishes its ability to disturb. Desu is released from Wu Jin's captivity after 15 years and falls in love with a sushi chef named Mido. <laughs> The two eventually consummate their relationship, and it's played as quite a touching gesture. But this gesture is completely reevaluated when we and Desu learn that Mido is actually related to him. Jin had taken revenge on Desu by imprisoning him, allowing his daughter to mature, and then hypnotizing him into having this relationship with her. Number 3. Seeing Double – The Prestige This film shares much in common with Now You See Me. Not in terms of story and tone, but in how it revolves around magic and its utilization in tricking the audience. Now you're looking for the secret. But you won't find it because, of course, you're not really looking. You don't really want to work it out. Alfred Borden is a working-class magician who develops a spectacular trick called the Transported Man. Rival magician Robert Angier tries desperately to learn and debunk the trick. Of course, all is revealed in the end. Borden is actually Alfred and Freddie Borden, a pair of identical twins. A twin. We were both Fallon. We were both Borden. Angier goes mad trying to one-up Borden and dabbles in science fiction. Borden simply uses a primitive trick. It's such a brilliant twist that we and Angier are flabbergasted by its simplicity. Knowing the ending ruins, dare we say, the magic of the reveal. Number two, one and the same, Fight Club. This is another one of those spoilers that everyone knows. It's simply impossible to divorce Fight Club from the famous twist that Tyler Durden is not real. Say it. Because we're the same person. That's right. In an iconic reveal, Durden is shown to be a dissociated personality of the narrators. He represents the narrator's more misanthropic and destructive penchants, and his primary aim is to cause anarchy and eliminate the country's credit card records. You could not do this on your own. All the ways you wish you could be, that's me. This twist is easily the most popular aspect of the film, and knowing it significantly hinders the enjoyment of its mystery. The movie raises many questions about Tyler, but the tantalizing mysteries surrounding his character evaporate once we know his true identity. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Who is Kaiser Soze? The Usual Suspects It's easy for a spoiler to ruin a movie when the entire movie is built around the spoiler. You think you can catch Kaiser Soze? You think a guy like that comes this close to getting caught and sticks his head out? The Usual Suspects is a mystery thriller from Brian Singer, who raises the most tantalizing question of the 1990s. Who is Kaiser Soze? Who's Kaiser Soze? Judging by the sudden change in mood, Mr. Kint, I feel sure the rest of your associates can tell you. Most of the movie is aimed at answering this question, as Soze is revealed to be nothing more than a shadowy crime lord. As pretty much everyone knows by now, Soze is Kevin Spacey's verbal kint, who iconically sheds his physical handicaps, lights up a cigarette, and goes back into the shadows. When an entire movie is built around one core mystery, it's probably best not to know the answer. And like that, he's gone. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.